Hello everybody, let's learn how to crush the Certified Kubernetes Application Developer Exam. There are four parts to this video, skip to whichever one you like from the timestamps down in the description. Part 1, how to apply and how to take the CCAD. The CCAD is an online exam. It costs $300, which includes two attempts to take it. Based on what is available, you can choose any date and any time that suits you. You're required to use Google Chrome, as well as install a special extension that they can use to spy on you. You'll also need to temporarily allow third-party cookies. You will be required to have primary and possibly secondary ID, depending on what part of the world you are in or from. You will need to hold up this ID to the webcam, so have it with you during the test. Choose a private location to take your exam. You will be required to show off your entire room, every nook and cranny, with your webcam, so make sure you have that ready. You can't eat during the exam, and you can only drink clear liquids from clear bottles or from a clear glass. You're not allowed to have a scratch sheet, so don't bother with pen and paper. You have to have an active mic, but to the socially anxious, all of your communication with your proctor will be through a chat bar. Time for part two, exam content. You can find what objectives are going to be on the test by visiting the bottom of the CCAD website and clicking on Curriculum Overview. Choose the most recent CCAD curriculum in that GitHub repository to see what they are. There are 19 questions on the CCAD exam, and there are 19 objectives in the CCAD curriculum. However, not all of them may be on your randomly generated test. Here are some example questions for each of the objectives, as well as an explanation of how your understanding of that objective may be tested. Understand Kubernetes API primitives. This involves knowing how to work with basic Kubernetes objects like containers, pods, services, deployments, and especially namespaces like shown below. Create and configure basic pods. So, can you build a pod manifest from a set of parameters such as a pod name, a container name, a container image, and so forth? That is what this is looking to test. Understand multi-container pod design patterns. These kinds of questions may require you to create pods with sidecar containers, such as ambassador, adapter, and reverse proxy sidecars. While you may need to have these types of containers work with each other, you will likely be given instructions on how to do so. Understand deployments and how to perform rolling updates. You should know how to build a deployment from a set of given parameters like replica account, pod name, service account assignment, and so on. You may even be asked to adapt a pod manifest into a deployment manifest. Understand deployments and how to perform rolling rollbacks. You may be given an existing deployment that is already several revisions old. Be prepared to roll back using kube control undo to a previous version. Understand jobs and cron jobs. Be sure to understand how to syntactically enter commands to be run in these manifests. You may also be asked to have a job run a certain number of times or for a cron job to time out after a certain period of attempts. Understand how to use labels, selectors, and annotations. Labels and annotations may be asked to be arbitrarily added to a pod or deployment. You may also need to change labels of certain objects in order to include them in something like a replica set or network policy. Understand persistent volume claims for storage. These could potentially be very long questions with a lot of steps. You may be asked to make three separate objects, such as a persistent volume, a persistent volume claim that binds to it, and maybe a pod or deployment that mounts that persistent volume claim. Having quick access to these manifests is essential to do well with this kind of question. Understand config maps. You'll likely be asked to create config maps with either files or environmental variables inside of them. You'll almost certainly be asked to mount these config maps as volumes or variables in a container. Understand security contexts. If prompted, then you would need to assign user, primary group, and or secondary group processes to a whole pod or to a single container. Define an application's resource requirements. Here you would be required to add a requests or a limits parameter to a given container in a pod. Create and consume secrets. You'll likely be asked to create secrets, possibly with multiple key values or files inside of them. You'll almost certainly be asked to mount these secrets as volumes in a container. You may also be asked to export the Base64 encoded token inside of your secret into an existing text file. 
Understanding service accounts. For this objective, an example of what you might be asked to do is tie a service account to a pod or deployment. Understand liveness probes and readiness probes. It is possible that you might be asked to take an existing pod with a liveness or readiness probe that isn't working on top of it and then find out what the problem is and then fix it. It's also possible that you may have to assign a probe to a container using parameters that are provided by the task. Understand container logging. It's possible that many tasks may have a portion that ask you to generate logs from a pod and then copy and paste those logs somewhere else into a pre-made text file. Understand how to monitor applications in Kubernetes. If you encounter a question like this, then be familiar with the cube control top command and how it can be used to determine memory and CPU usage of pods and across nodes. Understand debugging in Kubernetes. It's very possible that you may receive questions that ask you to look at an existing broken pod or deployment, determine what is wrong, and then fix it. Make sure that you're handy with the cube control commands describe and logs. Understand services. You may be asked to generate services, either cluster IP or node port type, to expose a pod or a set of pods. In that case, you may be provided with ports and other parameters to set for this new service. Demonstrate basic understanding of network policies. You may be presented with an existing network policy, and you must determine how it might be modified to accommodate ingress or egress from a given pod. Or you may be told to leave the network policy alone and adapt the pod to match the network policy as is. Time for part three, pro tips. Time runs out fast. If you're always searching for answers, then you are never gonna finish. Pre-arm yourself. There's nothing illegal about having pre-made bookmarks to pages in the Kubernetes I.O. page, especially having bookmarks to the manifests that you will need to copy, paste, and tweak to answer your tasks. When searching the Kubernetes site, the page uses Google search to examine its contents. So no Google search bar tricks, such as using quotation marks around keywords to find exactly what it is that you need. Questions can be answered in any order, so use flags to skip questions and have them marked to return to later. You have access to a notepad in the test environment. If you do move away from a question, leave a comment for yourself so that when you return, you can pick up right where you left off. If a question starts off with a context that you're supposed to be in, stop and run that context command. If you're not in the correct context, you may not get credit for your answer. Questions can have different weights, anywhere from 2 to 13%. Partial credit is a possibility, so if you can do part of a task, but not all of it, do the part of it that you can. Part 4, Command Line Mastery. Because you'll often need to use commands like kubectl edit, which creates a very long manifest, you'll want to be able to search through YAML files quickly in Vim. Press escape to be out of any mode that you might be in, then type slash, and then the string that you're searching for. Find me. Ah, there it is. When you are modifying manifests, say from a pod to a deployment, then you'll need to shift indentation on many lines. Press escape to be out of any mode that you might be in in Vim, and then type set shift width equals two. This will match the two space indentation that's found in Kubernetes IO manifests. To select a group of lines to indent, place your cursor at the top of one of those lines, and then press shift V to enter visual line mode. Press the up or down arrows to select the lines that you wish, and then press shift period to shift the indent to the right, or press shift comma to shift the indent to the left. If you're receiving an error that's telling you that there's an issue on line 14, then just type colon 14 and then go straight to that line. Another essential trick that isn't necessarily using Vim, but is using the command line to edit text files, is what to do if you are being asked to get the logs from an existing pod or an otherwise create some sort of output that needs to be placed inside of an already existing file. This is very common on the CCAD exam. And what's worse is, is that many of the files on the CCAD are write protected. So they require a sudo command in order to do it. The technique that you can use all in one command that's guaranteed to work on the CCAD would be something like this. If I'm going to display the logs from a pod called, let's say, Alta 3 pod, I would follow that by a pipe, 
super user do t and then write out the path to the file that we are looking to write those logs into. This would be the one line of log that's in our output, but should also be present inside of this file now. Excellent. That is absolutely a command that you absolutely should commit to memory because it will be useful on the CCAT exam. Best of luck to everyone on your exam. Check our video collection at Alta 3 for lessons on Kubernetes and visit our website at alta3.com if you're interested in booking classes to further your Kubernetes knowledge.